All right. Good day. Good day to each and every one of you in the Christian Counseling uh, Master's Program at Zoe Fellowship Bible College. And we are getting ready to go over uh, our next book, talking about the five languages of apology. This is Dr. Stephanie McKinney. Uh, so good to see each and every one of you. And so we're going to go ahead and get started and touch a little bit about uh, this apology thing. You know, last week uh, we talked about forgiveness and how important it is to forgive and what the Bible says about forgiveness and asking for repentance and apologizing. And so uh, now we are uh, reading uh, this book uh, talking about the five languages of apology. My goodness, we didn't even realize that there was five parts to apologizing, but uh, the book begins to share with us each steps. And there are uh, five, uh, the five languages are expressing regret, accepting responsibility, uh, making restitution, genuinely uh, repenting, uh, being genuine about that, and requesting uh, forgiveness. So uh, chapter one, we're going to go over briefly a little bit on chapter one and chapter two and um, share a few things there. And chapter one talks about uh, why I apologize. And let me let me go ahead and pray before we get started. Father, we glorify you. We give you praise. We give you honor because you're worthy of praise. We thank you so much for this opportunity, Father, to uh, to learn, to uh, be challenged, to be encouraged uh, through the teaching tonight. Father, help us in this area of apology or repentance or forgiveness, the areas uh, where we need most help in, Father, that you would help us, that you would be our guide. I pray that you think through my thoughts and speak through my vocal cords. I pray, Father, for understanding to be released unto those that are listening uh, on today in Jesus' name. Amen. So it talks about apology. Why apologize? Why should we apologize? And of course, if you know or you have been or maybe you did offend somebody or you have been offended by somebody, you know that once uh, that violation has taken place, there are other feelings that come up because somebody has done you wrong. And so it says in um, uh, about to say chapter 18 or verse 18, but page 18 in the book. Uh, at the top, it says, when one's sense of right is violated, that person will experience anger. And so when a person is, is offended, we have done wrong to them, or they have done wrong to you, what happens is we get upset, we get angry, we get frustrated, we get uh, we start pouting, we might start fussing at people, we might start having an attitude because um, that uh, relationship has been violated. When I say violated, that there is something that has taken place to fracture that relationship, to cause that relationship to have a split or a divide. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that because something has happened, a person has offended you or you have offended somebody, doesn't mean that that is the end of the relationship. I guess it really depends on what took place, what happened, uh, how close that connection was and what have you. And so uh, as it talks about in this particular chapter, um, basically is uh, why we need to apologize, why we're uh, there is a need to apologize. And as it talks about, there is a cry for reconciliation at the top, while justice may bring some sense of satisfaction to the offended person, justice does not typically restore relationships. Talks about at the bottom, something within us cries out for reconciliation when wrongdoing has fractured a relationship. You think about relationships even between a husband and wife. You go there because it talks about different relationships. It talks about parent relationships. It talks about couple relationships and just 
one-on-one uh, -on -one peers. But if you think about a husband and wife and something has been done, something has been said that has offended either spouse, right? You're going to, it's going to be a cry for uh, reconciliation or to restore uh, that relationship. And when I say cry, some people may yeah, actually cry. But in the yearning on the inside, you don't want things to remain the same. You don't want them to remain fractured. You don't want them to remain unresolved. Um, any of us, especially if you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you and you are a believer of Jesus Christ, when things are not right in relationships, there is something on the inside. I'm going to say the Holy Ghost that will want you to resolve it, will want you to fix it, will want you to do something to help or bring restoration or bring a reconciliation in some way. Sometimes people don't rest because they know they have offended someone and they want to make it right or vice versa. Okay. And so there's a cry for reconciliation and for the relationship to get back in place. And depending upon what has taken place, it, it will depend whether it will come right back together or if it takes some time to heal, all right? But apology starts off that healing process. And it talks about a genuine uh, uh, asking for forgiveness, okay? And we'll move on that or generally uh, uh, asking uh, to repent for what is wrong. Um, because we want to make sure that when we apologize, that the apology is sincere. All right. So uh, something within us cries for reconciliation when wrongdoing has fractured a relationship. Um, it is, uh, as this woman talks about in uh, page 19 about her spouse doing some wrongdoing, when she says, that in it is his sincere apology that makes genuine reconciliation possible, all right? That apology makes the difference. And if you can think about some things that people have wronged you and they coming back and say, I'm sorry, but they say it with attitude, you, you may not really be receptive to that apology because it sounds like they didn't really mean it from the heart. But when... A person has a sincere apology that they have offended you and they tell, they recognize what they had done to you, uh, then you're a little more receptive uh, to that apology. And so we got to realize as you are working with people, we're going to bring it to the Christian counseling. As you're working with people, sometimes people come into sessions talking about uh, relationships that have been fractured, okay? That could be husband and wife. That could be mother and daughter. I get a lot of mother-daughter uh, situations. Uh, father and son, daddy wasn't there. Mama wasn't there. Um, you got some siblings, all right? These relationships, and a lot of times when a relationship has been fractured, uh, sometimes, even as this book tells us, that a simple, possibly an apology because mm -hmm. you have some people that don't want to apologize. Uh, they, they, they're not going to say, I'm sorry. Maybe you know some people. I don't know if you're that person. Uh, but, you know, you don't want to apologize. And you know you're wrong, but you don't want to say it out of your mouth. Pride and all of that. You wasn't taught how to apologize. You wasn't taught how to say, I'm sorry. Whatever it was. But it's so important that sometimes to resolve those relationships, is a simple apology, okay? Um, for it says in 19, for lack of an apology, I have looked in the eyes of, of teenage rage and wondered how different life would, life would be and if abusive father had apologized. Here's an abusive father that has uh, beat up on his child since she was a little girl, okay? And it's saying here, how the teenager, you know, can become in a rage because you abused me all my life. And there was no apology. There was no explanation. Uh, there was no sincere uh, uh, 
uh, I'm, I'll never let that happen again. Or this is what was happening to me. And this is why I act the way I did. And so we got to realize without apologies, as it says in chapter 19 in the middle, without apology, anger builds and pushes us to demand justice. We don't like to be wrong, right? We want an apology. We want justice. We want to be treated fairly. And when, uh, as we see it, justice is not forthcoming, we often take matters into our own hands and seek revenge on those who have wronged us. We're hoping y'all ain't getting back at people retaliate. Not the Christian people, not at all. <laughs> Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Listen, don't be trying to get revenge. I'm going to get them back. And I'm going to, listen, that getting them back will backfire on you. All right? And so it's best to cast it over, say what you need to say. And I'm not saying get quiet and don't communicate because you want to tell your clients you need to be able to communicate your needs and the things that concern you, but you need to do it in a healthy way, an effective way. We're going to talk about that. I'm going to have a handout for you, but effective way and a healthy way to communicate what you are concerned about so that you can get the apology that you are looking for. All right. Um, it talks about uh, page 20. Can you forgive without an apology? All right. We talked about that a little bit uh, last week about how the scriptures tell us uh, to forgive. If we don't forgive. You know, the scriptures said, God, hey, we want forgiveness. All right. But that doesn't mean uh, uh, that you still do not, that you still uh, uh uh, don't want the apology. You still want the apology from that individual. All right. right? And you want to be able to forgive them because some people, um, some people you have to get forgive. Let me tell you, some people will not be able to give you an apology if they are dead and going on. All right. Uh, some people you come in your sessions and these people come in and they talk about how they daddy did them or how they mama did them, but mama is gone and daddy is gone and there will never be an apology. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to help them a uh, process that they must forgive because they're forgiving because they've got to learn to move on uh, because whatever that, that, that holding that, uh, bitterness it becomes up and that holding that unforgiveness in their heart is really stagnating them from moving forward in life. Okay. Um, as it talks about in 21, uh, page 21, forgiveness without an apology is often encouraged for the benefit of the forgiver rather than the benefit of the offender. We forgive not so much for the offender, but we forgive for ourselves, to free ourselves, all right? So if you hold it, any unforgiveness about somebody that done something to you, listen, I want to tell you today, forgive and release yourself. Because if you holding it, you are holding yourself hostage and bondage, and you are keeping yourself in the past. It's time to move on. All right. Just like in first Samuel, the 16th chapter, listen, <laughs> God uh, uh, began to speak to the prophet Samuel. He was upset that Saul did not obey God and he had to get, listen, and he mourning for Saul, just having a pity party. God began to tap on his shoulder, prophet. <laughs> How long are you going to do this? How long are you going to mourn for this? Because I have already moved on and I've already selected another king. And so a lot of times we have to move on and God will address us and he'll shake us and begin to tell us, hey, you need to move on from that. And so you have to begin to tell the people that you are working with that there is a time when you will have to move on. Now you can't rush them because they're, you know, they got to, process their feelings and their emotions, but you must encourage forgiveness and the ability to move on with their life, all right? You don't want to get stuck in the pain and all of that stuff. So Samuel had to catch himself. God began to say, go get your oil. Go on to get your oil. 
because <laughs> I'm about to send you over here to Jesse's house and you're going to have to anoint somebody else, okay? So sometimes we have to get up and get oil now, <laughs> get back in the presence of God and begin to ask God to guide you, all right? So uh, we are moving on. That is so important for us. This is why it's telling us the many things that we must begin to forgive. And we uh, the reason for the apology. Um, let's see, 21, the five-gallon container. When we apologize, we accept responsibility for our behavior, seeking to make amends with the person who was offended, All right? So uh, you have to encourage uh, individuals that you talk with to make to take ownership or take responsibility for their wrong. Okay, a lot of times we don't like people say, All right, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. You know, they point telling you what's, how they offend? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. That's not me. That's not me. <laughs> that used to be one of my little said. That's not me. Uh -uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> and then when I look back, I'm like, Ooh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. And I had to go back and get it corrected. So listen, don't go into that. That's not me. That's not me. Now, nine times out of 10, if they brought it to your attention, I might be a little some of you in there. All right. And so we got to get people to the place where they take ownership and be responsible for their wrongdoing and get it right. And just because they make a mistake, just because we fail, does not mean we are a failure. We just made a mistake. We offended someone or they offended us, but we got to forget and move on. Because you got to recognize, is it worth continuing uh, hating on each other or having bitterness? And you know, trying to walk around away from them. You see them coming and you make every effort to get out of their way. Come on now. Uh, we got to get past that. Listen, we grown. And we grown. <laughs> okay, so we got to do it the Bible way. So that's why uh, this particular uh, chapter is talking about why apologize? Because there's a fracture in the relationship. There's something um, that has broken that relationship. And it is uh, the cry for reconciliation and restoration to get back uh, to where it used to be. All right, uh, 22, uh, where it says before, can we learn to apologize? Well, that's a question, but yes, we can learn to apologize. We can learn that there's five languages to apology. Didn't even think about that. You know how we just say, I'm sorry and keep it moving, but there's five languages and we're going to learn that um here it says we may or may not have learned the art of apologizing when we were children okay maybe you didn't learn that you know you just kept it to yourself you just kept on everybody just kept on going because it was like okay whatever keep on going we just ignore it we just act like it didn't happen okay in healthy families parents teach their children to apologize however uh, many children grow up in dysfunctional families where hurt, anger, and bitterness are a way of life, and no one ever apologizes. Now, I don't know if that's you or if you grew up like that. Well, nobody apologizes. Maybe you married to somebody that never apologized. Do some wrong, but they, mm -mm, you ain't about to get that. But they may be nicer to you. <laughs> That's their way of apologize. They learned a different language, but you got to learn how to use your words. All right. So we're going to go on to chapter two real quick. Moving quickly, moving quickly. Uh, the next one, apology language number one. Chapter one was talking about why we need to apologize. Uh, chapter uh, two is talking about uh, apology language number one, expressing regret okay expressing regret um what most people are looking for in an apology is sincerity okay and you're going to see a lot of that in this chapter that when uh, a person expresses regret um, the person that is receiving that information wants to be able to um wants to be able to um, hear that apology from a sincere standpoint, 
Okay. Um, let's see. One of the ladies that were talking about Jane Fonda and Oliver North, and they say here, she said that she was sorry, Alan responded. That's not an apology, said North, adding, she didn't say, will you forgive me? I'm sorry is not an apology. For some people, I'm sorry is an apology. And for some, it's like, no, you need to be able to express what you did wrong um, and, and how it has affected that person and that you will not do that again, okay? Having some remorse, okay? Um, page 26, the first language of apology is expressing regret. That's in the middle paragraph. Most commonly, it is expressed in the words, I am sorry. Expressing regret is the emotional aspect of an apology. It is expressing to the offended person your own sense of guilt, shame, and pain that your behavior has hurt him deeply, okay? So expressing a regret is fundamental to good relationships. Having some remorse, you know, some people do certain things and they have no remorse of what they have done. They just I said, I was sorry, <laughs> you know, what? Wait a minute. Hold up. <laughs> you know, but the po apology um, is got to be sincere. It's got to be able to express regret. I really did not mean to hurt you. And I'm sorry that it has made you feel this way because that is not my intention to make you feel the way that you're feeling right now. And so you're taking heed not only to apologize, but also recognizing the person's feelings and uh, what has taken place uh, and, and how it has affected them and caused a divide between uh, those two people. Uh, without the expression of regret, they do not sense that the apology is adequate or sincere. Oh boy, I tell you. So uh, you can't just throw up, I'm a sorry, and that's it and keep on going. You want to be able to be sincere. And that's what you want to be able to express to those that you're going to be working with. Page 28. What does your body say? Okay. Because our body language also expresses how we feel. You know, uh, somebody can say, I'm sorry. And it with attitude and the hands folded. And they just don't want to, you know, oh, I'm sorry. I, they don't even look at you. I said I was sorry. They're looking at the TV. Yeah, all right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, your body language. You got to be all in. When you're sharing with someone your regret, expressing your regret, and you want to apologize, you, you got to be attentive. You got to be alert. You got to be sitting up. You got to get the eye contact. OK, your body language will begin to speak as well. And people will know if you're really interested or if you really want to hear what they have to say based upon your body language. And so when you're talking with people, uh, you can tell if they're even interested in what you're saying. And guess what? They watching how you receiving it, whether you're giving them your undivided attention. OK, so that's very important. So what does your body say? Um, um, page 29 says, sorry for what? When you are apologizing or when people are apologizing, it's important to be specific about what you are apologizing for. I'm sorry. Are you sorry? Sorry for what? Like somebody come out the blue. Now y'all done had a talk and discussion a couple of days ago and all of a sudden they come out with, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry for what? What are you talking about? That was three, four, five days ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> I have been over that. But anyway, sometimes that happens. So you need to be specific as to why you are making this apology to that individual, okay? Um, page 30. Anytime we verbally, verbally shift the blame to the other person, we have removed from an apology to an attack. Attacks never lead to forgiveness and reconciliation. All right. Now look at that. The minute you verbally shift the blame to somebody else, uh, we have moved from an apology to attack. Well, I, I would, I wouldn't have did that to you anyway if you hadn't 
what? So now you're shifting the blame. Like that person is control of your behavior. No, you are an adult. You you control your own. You control of this right here. The, you're controlling your body, and you have to uh, take ownership, as I shared before, ownership for your own actions. We can't shift the blame. You know, Adam started that mess. Uh huh. In the garden, it was that woman. <laughs> that woman you gave me. She did that. She did that. Mm -hmm. And then Eve had a nurse say, with that, that serpent, <laughs> you know, everybody blaming everybody because they shamed, they embarrassed. Uh, they know they did something they had no business doing. Okay. They didn't listen. They didn't obey. And so everybody's shifting the blame. And so what happens when you shift the blame, and sometimes that happens in marital relationships. Sometimes that happens between peers, that happens between friends, besties, that happens between brother and sister, father and son, daughter and mother. And if you hadn't, a, uh, then I wouldn't know. Uh, okay. So uh, is that the pop? What, what are we doing? What you saying? <laughs> you know, um, so you got to be sure that you're not shifting the blame and you have to hear what other people are saying and you may have to ask them, how did you tell your spouse? How did you tell your child? And as they began to speak and I and they began to tell you, they said, ah, oh, you shifted the blame and you didn't take ownership. You dismissed their feelings and did not acknowledge that you had done wrong. All right. So ways to communicate. All right. We're going to shift. We're going to shift on. Um, the, I hope you can forgive me. And I believe this will probably be one of your assignments. It won't be today, uh, but probably next time. Um, they, they, they wrote a letter, okay? I wrote a letter of someone that they needed uh, to apologize to. And sometimes uh, you're not able to verbally say it because you don't know how the person is going to respond. And sometimes I encourage even some of my clients, write them a letter. If you can't say it or you feel uncomfortable, you're concerned about what they're going to say, write it out ahead of time so that you can gather your thoughts and so that you can have something, a cheat sheet, if you will, to apologize to them. And so it's important for us that sometimes when you cannot say it, uh, you cannot text it. You know, some people try to text apologies. I don't know if that is really, it's a start, but really a conversation need to be had, okay? Even with a letter, it's okay to write the letter. That's the start off, just to kind of open the door. But a convers it should follow a conversation, okay? A text message, ah, da, da, da. but it should follow a, com a conversation. That really shows the... Uh, sincerity of the apology all right so they're talking about uh, writing letters to individuals um and sharing um their concern and what um they have done or they wanted to repent from or how the person has offended them okay um 34 and 35 and we're going to wrap up here um the last paragraph excuse me in 34 <laughs> Going on. But these and many others, the apology language of expressing regret is extremely important in the process of healing and restoration. If you want these people to sense your sincerity, then you must learn to speak the language of regret. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's the first language, which focuses on their pain and your behavior and how the two are related, okay? So when we talk about the language of regret, you are focusing on their pain and your behavior and how the two related, all right? Their pain and what you did to cause that pain, okay? That's expressing the language of expressing regret. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. Um, okay, and then it says here on 34, if you're willing to express regret, here are some statements that may help you to do so. All right? 
So the statements of regret found on page 35, it says, I know now that I hurt you very deeply. That causes me immense pain. I'm truly sorry for what I did. All right. I feel really bad that I disappointed you. I should have uh, been more thoughtful. I'm sorry that I caused you so much pain. Okay. So you're recognizing uh, what caused them their pain and how they became upset. Um, at the time, I obviously, I was not thinking very well. I never intended to hurt you. But, one, but now I can see that my words were way out of line. I'm sorry that I was so insensitive, okay? <laughs> Excuse me, the last two. I am sorry that I violated your trust, okay? I created a roadblock in our relationship that I want to remove. I understand that even after I apologize, it may take a while for you to venture down the road of trust with me again, okay? Just because you apologize to somebody doesn't mean they're going to put you back in their bosom, okay? Sometimes you're going to have to give the person the time to process everything that has taken place and to build that trust. So when you're working with people, they may come back to you and say, well, I apologize. I was sincere. I told them that da, 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 da. I, I don't never happen again. I really feel bad. But they're still holding it over my head. They're taking time. You got to give them time to process it. Okay. Um, you were promised a service that we have not provided. I am sorry that our company clearly dropped the ball this time. Okay. And so those are some of the statements of regret. You may not say it like how he said it in the book, but you can um, tweak it and just utilize it. But those are examples that you can share uh, with other people that you will begin to work with that will um, be in the need of apologizing to uh, someone that they have hurt, disappointed, let down, uh, whatever it is that took place in the relationship, that they'll be able to uh, apologize effectively, that they'll recognize what they have done wrong and then begin to share that in their apology. Okay. So that's all we have for today. Uh, for next class, I ask that you will read uh, chapter three and four. Three and four. Yeah. Three and four. Okay. Because we'll go through these and then there's a few other things that we need to go through uh, for the book. So uh, chapters three and four, uh, we will read that for next class and prepare to discuss uh, those particular chapters at that time. All right, thank y'all so much.